How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to Office Hours. It's been a little while. Uh, that's because the whole world shit itself. And um, everyone's been going crazy, including me. Um, I've had to move twice in the last month. Uh, but all is good now. And I have this awesome new setup, as you can see, which is super comfy. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about where we're at, and then I just want to jump into questions. And of course, I want to focus on it, everything has changed, obviously. Oh, duh, everything has changed. Thank you, Jason. Oh, great wisdom from above. Um, so I want to focus on, well, I want to direct the focus towards where I'm going to be focusing on in general for uh, the, the next while, probably the next year or so, which is how to thrive during this time, how to adapt practice to it, how we can uh, roll with it and not just roll with it, but come out ahead because uh, you can. And there's a lot of incredible opportunity that's going to happen in this time. And uh, you don't want to miss it. You want to, you don't want to be left out because you are in your reactive mindset. So if I have one message uh, for everyone in the world right now, it's, it's the most obvious thing, which is, which is uh, get out of your fight or flight, right? Like get out of reactive. Reactive is... You know, well, it's exactly what it says. Uh, the reactive mind, as L. Ron Hubbard put it. <laughs> he wasn't all bad. Uh, he, had, he had a few good points, actually, uh, before it all went to shit. But um, uh, the reactive mind, yeah. Or let's just say reactivity, right? He, he stole it from Buddhism. Is the idea that you're consistently a stimulus response robot. This is what Gurdjieff meant when he said that yeah, humanity uh, is asleep. It's what he meant when he said humanity uh, is, or, uh, human beings are largely robots or robotic. Um, he meant that we are automatons because we are constantly programmed by stimulus input. The same thing is in Buddhism, the same thing is in Hinduism. We're, and even in the book of the law, it says the slave shall serve. And what it means potentially is that uh, those who are a slave to their five senses, so their sense inputs, and they think it's real. Uh, become enslaved to stimulus input and become stimulus response robots. We don't want to do that to become a magician. Step one is to project your will, to project your plan for what you wish to occur in your life and, and in your reality and to go towards that. So you're walking towards something. <laughs> you're expanding your energy towards something instead of contracting your energy away from inputs, from sense input. Right? It's really that simple, right? There's only two energetic settings on a human being, right? So, so for the time being, throw out all the complicated shit. Oh, the Kabbalah, the 10 spheres, the paths, or whatever other model, Buddhism, the runes, oh, the secret chiefs, the, the you know, all this shit. It's, it's not shit, excuse me. They're going to dock me for that one. Um, throw out all the complicated everything that is complicated. And, and let's be very, very simple because it's really easy to wrap yourself into tangles uh, with the subject matter and to confuse the hell out of yourself. Uh, make it simple. There are only two settings on a human being. Uh, expansion and contraction, right? That's it. Expansion and contraction. Either your energy is expanding outwards to meet the world or it's contracting inward. Okay. Um, so right now the whole world is obviously contracting. Everyone is all alone in bed sit land. Everyone is hiding in their, in their hubbies or cubby holes. Um, and I'm not, not saying don't do that, but I'm saying that um, mentally, internally, everyone is contracting and afraid and reacting. Oh my God, what's in the news today? Which uh, I highly recommend you at least just spend like a few seconds of grazing over instead of doing a deep dive because you'll even the military by the way, U.S. military is telling its state soldiers not to spend too much time reading the news because they'll go nuts. Um, so in expansion and contraction. So to be a magician is to project energy outward, right? And we know this from we know all about this. We know about contraction from yoga, and we know about expansion from ritual. Uh, anyone who's ever done a banishing ritual or, or, or thrown some pentagrams up knows all about energetic expansion. So um, to contract is to die and to expand is to live. Right? So your goal should be to, to very clearly articulate to yourself a forward positive plan going forward. Is it going to be radically different? Yes. Is it going to be completely changed potentially from what it was before all this happened? Yes. 
Right? Can it still, however, fit into the general pattern of your true will and must it? And may it even perhaps be much closer to your sense of what your true will is? Absolutely, absolutely, right? Because Lord knows most of the stuff that the world is, has contracted away from now was unhealthy anyways, right? I mean, just go, I don't know where you are obviously in the world, but you know, and you just probably just go outside and nature is looking pretty happy right now. There's lots of hummingbirds. There's all kinds of, you know, it's like the birds are loud enough here for the first time in my life to actually wake me up in the morning, just in the, in, in the, in the suburbs, right? It's crazy. So now that said, there is one point that I had been mulling over a lot in my head and uh, helped me come to a lot of clarity. And I want to share that before we get into questions. And of course, the, I don't want the questions to just be uh, what is the, you know, how do I do a pentagram ritual, but uh, hopefully as much as possible focused on this time so that all the other students can derive as much as possible from each question and uh, questions about, uh, or you can ask a question or share your experience. If anyone would like to share their experience doing a spiritual practice during this time or using the uh, courses, that would be excellent. So questions or, or questions or a bit of shared experience or both. Maybe we can get a little mix of both. I don't want to go for too long, but we will. Uh, let's, let's all catch up. So the thing I've been thinking about is the topic of self-defense. Now, this is something I think about a lot, right? And, and I particularly have been for the last year. And I want to comment on this briefly in that everyone or most people probably have a loop going in their head now, uh, which they may have not fully had before, of how do I defend myself? Is this the zombie apocalypse? Uh, you know, as, you know, and of course we have the, get the data on uh, the gun sales in America right, are out of control. Not out of control, they're, they're very, very high, right? And uh, people are kind of stuck inside being you know, a little afraid. Do I, what happens if I run out of food? What happens if I run out of toilet paper? What happens if somebody breaks in all this? So I wanna articulate something that uh, occurred to me, which is about self-defense, because I, I was mulling this over and it occurred to me that people have an idea that they must defend themselves from strength, right? Because you watch movies and the hero always fights the bad guy and the bad guy is, Thanos, right, or the, the infinitely strong supervillain. This is not the case in the real world. When you're thinking about self-defense, as you should, right, you need to think what you are defending yourself from is not strength, it's weakness, right? You need to be able to defend yourself from weakness. What does this mean? And this applies to magical people in general. Um, strong people don't uh, you know, break into people's houses. Strong people don't um, uh, cause terrorist events. Strong people don't, uh, you know, cause trouble for other people. Strong people don't attack people on the street. Uh, strong people don't uh, rock the, uh, you know, undermine the social fabric, as it were. And so we are going into a world in which a lot of people are not going to be playing from a position of strength, obviously. A lot of people are going to be afraid. A lot of people are going to feel a sense of lack. They are going to feel weakness. Um, and then, and because of that reason, they will do um, uh, irrational things, desperate things, uh, uh, and and things they will they will uh, do things that hurt other people potentially. Right now, hopefully not very much, but it, it'll happen. It's already happened. Uh, it happens anyways. And um, depending on where you are in the world, you probably all you need to do is go out on the street to get a sense that things are a little edgy. That's not good. And those of us who uh, remember the LA riots uh, know how, um, or, or similar events, depend, again, you know, everyone has a different life experience. Um, most of my students are American, but if you live in many other places in the world, uh, the UK, Northern Ireland, right? You, Ireland, you know, you, you know all about this. So things can get weird, right? Um, in the same way, magical people must consistently defend themselves from uh, weakness, meaning envy, right? Um, policies that, uh, you know, envy from other people in their lives, uh, you know, expressed covertly often through sarcasm. Uh, many of you, I'm sure, have learned to not be too vocal about your practices because they attract that type of um, subtle or overt undercutting. It's an attack, right? And it can, it can undermine your practice if you're not careful. Um, 
magical people in particular, because they have interest in things like consciousness expansion, must consistently defend themselves from um, laws that restrict their freedom, or as I, uh, interesting, I was reading a writer named Boston Tea Party yesterday who refers to this as institutionalized envy, right? When the laws are put in place to restrict the freedom of others, because as H.L. Mencken said, uh, you know, out of the great fear that somebody somewhere might be having a better time than the person who is, is, is instituting the laws. So uh, th this I felt was a very useful concept, is that in, in defending ourselves, we are defending ourselves from weakness. Now, that doesn't mean that, you know, the, the, the super edgelordy old school occult thing of stamp down on the weak and all this, it doesn't mean that at all. It means it requires strength to be a normal person. It requires strength to be friendly. It requires strength to be positive, much more than it does to be negative. It requires a tremendous amount of strength to be compassionate to other people, right? Book of the Law, compassion is the vice of kings. Yes, it's a vice, we enjoy it, and it requires kings to do it, right? So the, um, and most of all, to bring this all the way back down to earth at the current moment, it requires strength to be normal, to institute normality, to institute a sense that everything is fine, right? Which is what we all need to do. And I think that if there is a, an excellent footing to come at the world right now, it is simply to, uh, it, it would be aggressive normality, right? To very forcefully and willfully institute a sense that things are fine. Uh, that doesn't mean don't react to things that are, are need to be reacted to, but it means you're in an internal state. Now, I'm talking largely to myself as well here, right? Because Lord knows for the, the last six months or six weeks, it, it's, it's, it's been a little hectic, right? So I'm sharing from my personal experience here that I think the, the best footing to get on here is to come from a position of strength. And strength doesn't mean uh, going overboard. It means being normal, right? It means instituting a sense that everything is fine. Physically, in your environment, it means holding routine. It means continuing to move forward and not uh, be in a fight or flight, right? Because uh, that cuts both ways. Flight, flight, you know, is the fear response, but also fight in almost all cases is also the, the over-exaggerated strength response. It's, it's also a fear response, obviously, but so strength doesn't mean like, you know, start like, you know, behaving in super aggressive ways. That's also an inappropriate response. Strength means coming from the other part of your nervous system. And this is what meditation is for. This is what meditation gives us. Meditation and spiritual practice gives us the, abil the ability to be fine even in the middle of a war zone. And I know that because I've done it, right? I walked through a war zone in Nepal in 2004 and, nothing, and it was fine. And everything was fine, right? So it, it, it's, and Gurdjieff says the same thing. So this is my message for Sunday. This is the Sunday sermon. Come from a position of strength, from normality, and realize that what you must defend yourself against is weakness. And that means external weakness and internal weakness. Um, another, another initiated writer, Julius Evola, he's controversial, but he also, like many of these people, has good points to make as well, many good points, um, says in The Metaphysics of War, his book, that uh, external difficulties, challenges, or things which are to be resisted in the environment are always manifestations of the internal issues. Right, so that one must, and we hear this all the time with people saying like, oh, well, you're just projecting your problems externally. Well, yes and no. Uh, do they overlap with internal issues? Yes. Are they not in the external world? No, of course that stuff is there. Right, so in the war of self-overcoming or of coming to consciousness, one must struggle against the difficulties that are presented to you in the external world knowing that they are, of course, manifestations of your own inadequacies, right? But the war, the, war is, uh, um, the war is carried out on both fronts simultaneously, as long as you understand that they are one front and don't divide your forces at Stalingrad. To be cheeky. Okay, so I think that that is a good, what, that's a good place to come from. Aggressive normality. All right, let's take questions. So for those, wow, this is the most, I believe the most participants we've ever had in 
office hours. So let's, um, uh, for, so for those who, uh, since I, I see I have a lot of new people and it's um, the people who are often doing office hours are raising their hands just to, so that everyone's on the same page. Um, in order to ask a question, what I ask that you do is you go to, ooh, there should be a hand somewhere on your bar where you can raise your hand. Caveat. Um, this is being, for those who are new, this is being recorded. Right, so if you ask a question, your voice and your name will, and your video, if you do choose to share video, you can only do audio if you want, um, will be uh, recorded and put on magic.me behind the paywall. Now, for today's episode, uh, this is also, at least part of this is also gonna be put on YouTube. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna cut out at least a segment of this to put on, on YouTube. And uh, so, so be aware of that as well before you ask your question. Uh, okay, you can also change your name, your text name if you, if you like. I don't know, other people, is it, do people have different needs about uh, privacy, uh, but um, just be aware of that uh, going ahead and, and, and asking a question, and just so we're clear, if you ask a question in your video, you do give me consent to use your image uh, basically in the recording on magic.me and on YouTube. Okay, so just be clear about that. All right, um, let's go down the list. So wait, let me count how many people I have. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm gonna pace myself a bit. So I'm gonna try and, uh, we'll try and do about five minutes per question. Okay, Chet is first up. Hey, Hello. Jason. How Hello. you doing? How's it going, man? Good. Good to see you. Congratulations on the Midnight Gospel. Thank you, I appreciate Amazing. it. Amazing. Um, I wanted to, I had a question, but I also wanted to give kind of a success story Great. for ma magic.me because um, it's, it's the craziest that it's not crazy really, but um, I, you know, I've been doing it um, like the site wide subscription for a couple of years. And um, I initially joined to better my finances because it seemed like I sort of had everything in my life that I needed, except that was always the struggle every month for like, the past 15 years trying to live as an artist. And um, so I, I got through most of the, the videos on, on the site and then I did the, the uh, seven day supercharger and I did that for finances. And uh, basically I did it to the T and it all kind of started manifesting around January. And I didn't even realize that that's when I had kind of had scheduled it to happen according to the working. It was just completely, it started happening. And uh, the bottom line is I, I have been, probably had a better year business wise up to this point than any year I've ever had. Awesome. That's great. So it was, it's, it's amazing. So for me, it's like, I'm already kind of, I've already been living this lifestyle of, uh, you know, social distancing because I'm an artist and I work all the time. In my, in my house. So it's like, you know, yeah, me too. It's like, okay, nothing changed. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I've been preparing for this my entire life kind of thing. Uh, but it's like, this is the first time I've never had to stress about money at the end of every month. That's great. Congratulations. About this whole thing, which is, thank you. It's so thank you. I mean, I appreciate it. This month? It. When What's everyone that? Else is stre this month when everyone else is stressing about money? Every month since the, since January, it's been. Oh, like that's excellent. More and that's more. Excellent. It's, it's crazy, man. I just got a, an order. Great. Right now, <laughs> it came in through, great, great, through my great. email. So anyway, I, I I recommend everybody to, for taking that. But on a uh, more so how? Let me ask you this: oh. How has since you said you had everything else lined up before that? How has your sense of that, or what has your sense of that been, in relation to other spiritual and magical practice? Oh well, actually, yeah, I thought I had everything else lined up but what turns out as soon as you know probably within a couple months of joining and starting to learn this practice I realized that oh I've been focusing all my attention on my business 100% and I'm completely neglecting my spirituality and my meditation and so it's like once I started doing that things you know just got into a regular meditation practice uh, that was like the big takeaway for me is it's like you know stay connected to your spirituality meditate on a, a regular basis and then things started kind of you know coming together and then I then I started doing it you know some sigil stuff and then I did the supercharger 
And, you know, it's like I haven't done any, any workings since I did that supercharger because everything's just been like, I've just been doing wow. my meditation and upkeep. <laughs> so you haven't, you, you haven't done the Fortuna working then? No, I didn't need to. Okay, well, I, didn't, I haven't needed to yet. I watched it. <laughs> just wait. I, just wait. I went, right, right. Yeah, no, I, I watched it and I was like, oh, this is great. But it's like, now I'm just trying to keep up with all the, the business I have actually, you know? So, That's great. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. You're I'm, I'm a success story for your, uh, for magic at me. That's great. Um, that, and, and so I guess what I was getting at, it's like, it's, it's like, did that make you feel, uh, did, did uh, what I guess what I'm getting at is because people often have the story of, oh, like, you know, um, uh, I, you know, poverty and spirituality go hand in hand. So it's kind of like, yeah. did, did your sense of, did your sense of spiritual connection improve or, or, or get worse after uh, things be became more uh, successful for you? Oh no. It's like, I don't have to stress about paying the bills every month so I can just devote my attention to spiritual, pra my spiritual practice. It's like, that's kind of what, it was this weird that I was spending so much time worrying about paying bills each month that I couldn't get it. You know, it was hard for me to focus on my, my meditation practice, you know? And so now that I've got enough money to cover things, that that's just this huge worry out of my life. And it's, and so it's, I'm spending that extra energy on, uh, what I should have been doing all along, which is my meditation practice. That's great. I, I, it's like, it's like literally, it's just totally pragmatic. It's like, it's that simple. It's just like, you got to free up space. You got to free exactly. up your hard drive to like, you, know, totally. you only have so many hours in the day. Right. Exactly. So, um, anyway, I, I did have a quick question, mm -hmm. um, like more of a practical question. Uh, what, do you have any recommendations i know you've talked about sort of doing magic for other people as as dicey because you get involved in their karma in a way but yep. you know it's like I, I just would i would uh you know i've got granddaughters that i really care about i would die for them and so it's like i i, I really feel like i i, I w would like to know some kind of practical maybe a practical working or some kind of something some kind of protective something I could offer on them. They're just little kids. So it's like, I don't know. It seems like that's, not, I mean, even if it did fuck my karma up, I would still do it for them. Family's different. Yeah. Right. Cause right. You, so it's, because you already have, you already right. assume the karma of protector True. automatically. You are, you, it's like, it's like, like, would, would you fuck up your karma by physically defending your, your grandchildren? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> right. Right. It's like it's like you already ha it's like you already assume the responsibility. That's true. So, Good point. Yeah, and wait wait till you're like wait till somebody's like pulling you out of an ancestral altar. Like fix my shit. <laughs> I can't make right. my car payments. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Damn it. I can't rest. <laughs> um like but yeah, you look at you like you go to China. Like I don't know if you've seen the big ancestral altars in China. There's this huge, mm -hmm. like yeah. gigantic. It's like just imagine like like thousands of years of like of like stern like asian parents just being like oh. <laughs> damn it <laughs> so yep um but i was wondering yeah, if there was I, like a practical kind of working practical maybe? let me think about that um well i, I mean obviously the, being a presence in their life and and being there uh, to lend as much uh, life wisdom as possible and that and they money. know you so that they because of this i've been able to support them with money and then you know make sure they have what they need because of that's the, wonderful man that makes me really yeah. happy that makes yeah, me happy. yeah so it works in that, that way too but you know well stick you know like that particularly <laughs> if they're young like you know sticking money in um uh, in, in you know long-term index funds for them yeah like starting long-term retirement funds then you can protect them when they're they're in you know, long after you're gone you know right, right and right. um that's you know i i think that yeah it's like we have this whole custom of like birthdays and christmas it's like think about like if like all those gifts like do you like i don't know how many toys people remember from when they were kids like imagine if that was i mean it's like okay look if you're a kid if and somebody's like i deposited you know five dollars in your in your index fund like if you're a kid you're gonna like you know start throwing ice cream at walls and shit you're gonna go ape shit but but like just imagine if that if that money was 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 used in that way you know like it'd be right. worth so much just the you know so um the in terms of magically i think that um that's an interesting question um i mean i'm thinking you know protect them i, I want to protect them from getting the coronavirus it's you know it's <laughs> You want to all, all of, you know, aside from all the practical measures we all take, it's like, I, yeah. I'm just wondering if there's something extra 
I could do for my family. The people well, I think practice, it, you know. in, in general, you need, I would, this is my, my straightforward response, which is that in general, you need to be able to, um, here, here's my off the cuff answer, right? Okay. Uh, so first of all, are there practical techniques somewhere? Yes, I'm sure. But my off the cuff answer is this, outside of getting, any, getting into anything technical, which is that you simply just need to get to a point in your development where you can extend your, so you can extend your energetic field over them. Mm, yeah. Right, at, 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 a, at a non-conscious level. Right. right? At, on an ongoing level. And you also need to be able to accept um, that, uh, and, you, and, and you accept the burden of stuff of, uh, of, of so if you, when you do that, when you essentially, it's like the contract of that, when you do that, you accept the burden of their suffering if necessary. Right. So it's like, it's basically like, if I need to take a knock for somebody, I will. Right. Okay. And, 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 and that's just, I, it's, it's just, you know, responsible humaning, you know, when it comes to family. Right. So it's yeah. not like, it's not anything that like goes out of the way. You know, now when we, when we get into an issue with that is when people decide that I am the savior of the whole world and I'm going to do that for the whole planet. Right. And they wonder why their, why their life looks like they got run over by a Mack truck. <laughs> right. So, yeah. But for the, for householder karma, it's like, well, it's assumed that you need to do that with your family anyways. Right. And, and a lot in, in the modern world, a lot of people have, um, um, rescinded that responsibility and we'll even see lots of um, spiritual justifications for that of people saying like well everyone has their own karma and all this like yeah right. but they're your family you know and it usually you, you very rarely if at all ever get more than one initiate or magical person per uh, family pod right so and so usually that person ends up you know bearing a lot of brunt mm. and now it's obviously not true in, in magical cultures often and things like that, but those are the exceptions. And the, the other thing is that um, spiritual practitioners within family units usually end up also bearing the brunt of ancestral karma and working, through, whether they're aware of it or not, burning off uh, prior ancestral uh, traumas and things like this, mm. right? So you, you kind of step up to the plate and... Um, you know, and it's like you, you often see this where it's like, oh, like crazy Uncle Joe is like into this weird stuff, but you know, <laughs> it's like, but you, you know, but he's kind of invisibly there in a sense. Right. I don't know if that makes sense, but the um, yeah. So I, I think, yeah, I, and, and I, 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 the primary way to do that is to be in their life and be there, be there physically. You know, it's like, it's like this is, and we know this. Like, it's like the primary, the the primary. Um, one of the primary determiners of success for adults later in life is to have both family members there, right? And, yeah. and stable, right? And particularly the father, right? And, mm -hmm. and you know, this is a, not a knock on single mothers. It's like single mothers are like, it's, it's an ungodly burden. It's yeah. heroic, right? It's amazing. It deserves everything, you know, every accolade in the world. Should people have to do that? No. Right? Is it a is it an unideal situation that people rise to the occasion heroically? Yeah, right. But it's not ideal, and the um, um, and and even more so to have a grandfatherly presence very rare, right? Very rare, right? So you never so so I'll I'll point this out. I never even thought about this till now. You 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 see in the media, it's like you know, particularly since the the uh, the talk show eighties and nineties. Uh, where, um, you know, people have discussed at and like, well, you know, where's the father? Or where's the father in the situation? So you never hear people saying like, where are the grandparents? Right. Not even talk. It's like, it's like, it's like uh, beyond the pale. So I think just physically being there is the main thing. Yeah. Um, and they've and got both their grandparents in their lives too. So it's kind of amazing. That's excellent. That, that's yeah. excellent. I mean, that's, both that's pairs. Huge... <laughs> yeah. So just yeah. don't check out. And so don't check. And so it's basically don't check out physically or energetically. And I think that's the right. main thing. Okay. I'm not doing that. So I, I'm sure all, all, right, so. all good then. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think so. And, uh, um, and, and I, just as a reminder, a meta reminder across the board for all magical practices is that, um, 
magical rituals and exercises and processes and all the stuff that you read, they're, they're training machines. It's kind of like the machines at the gym, right? But they're not the, it's not like this Hollywood idea of like, oh, you have to do this X process to get Y result. I mean, yes, to some extent, right. but it's also they train your, what you're doing is you're training your capacity on the subtle levels you know astral causal right yeah yeah all that and so so it's kind of like you just so you train yourself up you make yourself stronger then you kind of respond intuitively within the situation at the energetic yeah. level yeah that makes total sense cool thank you you're welcome appreciate that all right thanks for that i'm, I'm really happy for your success story oh thank you i'm getting yeah, a lot of these you. now i'm really I'm, it makes me really happy at least I've, I've done works. something right in my life <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Made a difference in mine for sure. Awesome. All right. All right. Thanks. Great stuff.